Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. The Ryan Rossillo Show Podcast. It is Stugatz and Mike Ryan filling in for Ryan Rossillo today. I guess I'm Will Kane. Is it Rossillo and Kane yet? I don't know. I don't know if they're going by that. Are they official? Are they official? I don't know. Saruti, is it official that is it Rosillo and Kane yet, or does that happen after the new year? What happens here? It's been announced January 2nd. Let's go. Okay, okay. so it's been announced, but not until January right, 2nd. Right, but I, so Rudy, what I'm wondering is, are we filling in for just Ryan Rosillo today, or are we filling in for Rosillo and Kane today? That's You're filling in for just Ryan Rosillo today. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. So it's Stugatz and Mike Ryan sitting in for uh, Ryan Rosillo today. He is... Uh, he is in a talent meeting right now. We were not invited because we are talentless. And so we're here doing the show. And we have been on the air for four hours. So this is our fifth hour on the radio. Um, I'm already exhausted. I can't imagine what the show is going to sound like and what I'm going to feel like uh, coming up at 3 o'clock. Um, how are you holding up there, Mike? I'm really tired because I get here a lot earlier than you do. To, yes, you do. As a producer of the Dan Levitard show, I got to get here earlier to prepare for a show. We hit the mics at 9 a.m. local time uh, for the local hour, so this is a true marathon for us, and uh, this is a first for us. I know we just we just did our first show yes. together over the weekend on weekend observations, and then all of a sudden, big league call up right here all the way to to, to Rosillo's show, yes. and soon to be Rosillo and Kane. Yes, uh, I am happy for you. Uh, I am not happy for me that I'm sitting here doing the show, but I want to showcase you today. That's what I want to do. Tom McShay is going to join us at one thirty. Now, we were offered the chance to do an entire hour with Todd McShay. I wanted to do that desperately. <laughs> you did not. Like, I, I, I want as much McShay in my life as possible. You did not want McShay for an entire hour on the show. Today. I would have loved to have spoken to Todd McShay for an hour. I would have figured out how. But he, the way it was pitched to us was, hey, you're starting the show with an hour of Todd McShay. <laughs> right. I'd find that a little odd because most people haven't really heard me. The people that are listening to Ryan Rosillo, let's get real, I don't think they're that familiar with the executive producer of the Dan Levitard show. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a weird introduction, wouldn't you say? Hey, it's me, the producer of the Dan Levitard show. Here's an hour of me with Todd McShay <laughs> out the I gate. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I feel like we could have made it work, but it's fine. I don't want to, I don't want to blow up the construct of this show. They have a good show. I do. Well, I know you do, but I don't. Um, so we're going to have McShay on. We settled for a half hour of McShay. Yeah. one thirty to 2. We'll talk draft and whatever else we want to talk about with McShay. His funny. hair. Yes. His first mock came out, his hair, which is fantastic. In fact, I would say, here is my gold, silver, and bronze medalist for hair at ESPN. Writing these down. Okay. The bronze medalist for hair at ESPN, believe it or not, is Saruti. Really? Oh, yes. No, yes. he does. He's got a great lid. Saruti has, and I'm not certain Saruti's not the best looking guy at ESPN. He's a very good looking man. Yeah. Saruti, how do you feel about that? Am I, uh, are you properly rated there? Uh, I'm blushing, so thank you guys. Really appreciate right. that. Um, right. I think I used to have a bun, so I think you're thinking of when I had actual long hair. It's now all gone, so I'm sorry. sorry oh, really? Me there. I, I was know. thinking about you with the bun. That's, that's, that's the last that time I saw you, I think. Yeah, you had the bun in the hair. So, so what, is it completely shaved off now? Or? Yeah, it's pretty short, you know. Simple, right. simple dude look. But the fact the that the fact that you can grow it out to a place where you have a bun and the bun actually looks good on you, um, I still have you as my bronze medalist. Um, McShay is actually my silver. He's medalist. also my silver. I was going to say, yeah, because I think I think we agree on who's our who's our gold. And there was a big debate about silver and gold. Silver is McShay, and what I like about uh, McShay is he has the ability to sort of go with the seasons. Right. You notice right now it's fall. His hair's a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. Once he starts talking draft in the springtime with Kuiper, all of a sudden becomes a little bit strawberry blonde. Right. Yeah, I have noticed that. It's interesting. Uh, so we have Reese Davis, right? No. Oh, really? No. Even though Reese is uh, my fourth, I was going Will Kane number one. Wow. Yes, because we've said often Will wow. Kane looks like golf, but Will Kane's got a great lid. That lettuce you can put in a hat. Yeah. It'll come out the back. It looks great. Not unlike Saruti, but I guess I, I'm I'm doing the thing where Will's more famous than Saruti. Yeah, I guess. Um, Saruti, how do you feel about that Will Kane's hair? It's totally fair. He has more of like the clean cut, like part look. So I, I respect his decision. I respect your decision. But what, but what I respect most about Will Kane is yes, he can, he can tighten it up and it could look great and very professional. But I'm sure on the weekends he can literally let his hair down. I think Will Kane right out of bed, like right when he wakes up, I think he looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Wavy, good and hair. Now's the time yeah. of year where he starts putting sweaters over dress shirts. Right. It's such a good look, especially for him. It really is. 
Um, so, Rudy, are we on TV today? I have no idea. <laughs> like, we, we have no idea what we're doing here because we're down in Miami. We're down on South Beach. This is where we do our show, the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz, uh, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, ESPN. You were on in too many places. Are we actually on television today? It's a funny question because I got an email from our TV producer this morning asking if we were on TV, in fact. And no, we are not. Just radio. Okay. So, right, they, just you radio. guys aren't cool enough. I'm sorry. Maybe in a few years. All right, so <laughs> how should I feel about this? We weren't inv- uh, invited to the talent meeting, and we're not on TV today. Like, what's on TV? If all the talent's in a meeting, then what's on TV today? Because we're here grinding it out, doing seven hours of radio. What What is on ESPN News today, Saruti? What's on in place of us? Golik and Wingo re-air. I think this oh, is the that- third straight time it's been on. Um, so live, one other re-air, and then this the second re-air. All right. I see Windhorst on ESPN. How did he get out of the talent meeting? Why'd you get out of the talent meeting? Well, someone had to do the show here. Yeah. I think uh, I think what's going on is there's a handful of talent that uh, maybe already had their meeting because McShay, he's going to be joining us for at least 30 minutes while this meeting's going on, and he's going to be all right. What made him so special? Well, his mock draft came out. Oh, big yeah. day for him. Yeah, yes, so they needed right. him. That's why we're talking. Right. Anyway, it's time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. We'll update the Levitard Show polls uh, coming up next, and then McShay's going to join us at one thirty. And all the benchmarks and games that they play on the Rosillo Show, I have requested, uh, made a request to Saruti that we play them all in one day. In fact, I might want to do it all in one segment. Just play every single game that they have and just mash them into one segment, maybe one hour. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, Mike, you are big on this. We're down here in Miami, and I think the Stanton story down here is, for a lot of different reasons, is a lot bigger and a bigger discussion point uh, than it is anywhere else. Because in most other places, especially New York, it's being celebrated. Yes. You have Judge, you have Stanton, you have this great lineup. Who doesn't want to see that lineup? I'm a Mets fan, and I can't wait to watch the Yankees. Okay? That's how excited I am to see Judge and Stanton and Sanchez and all the other guys uh, in the same lineup, and they might get Machado, too, uh, from the Baltimore Orioles. But what people don't realize, and I don't expect them to, I don't expect people to know the history of Miami Marlins baseball and how many times this fan base has been let down by the owners and by Major League Baseball. I don't expect you to know it, but it's a totally different story down here, and it is not one of celebration. It is one of major disappointment. It's been a sad week down here. Yeah, disappointment, but also anger. Yeah. People are fired up about this. Yes. And I, I this is one of those cool parts where I realize, hey, we have some influence because of our place, our day part here on ESPN Radio. Right. The national discussion, I kind of feel, before we sort of came along, and Dan, who's been crazy passionate about it this week, was one of celebration. It's Giancarlo Santon going to the Yankees paired with Aaron Judge. This is a dream for Major League Baseball. This is very good for Major League Baseball. And it doesn't matter to them that Miami's very angry. But we're going to try to prove it to you that we are. Because yes. what happened down here was damn near criminal to this uh, market. It's really bad. I mean, just the optics alone on it are confounding. They really are. Where you have you have Rob Manford and Major League Baseball um, selling a team, the Miami Marlins, to Derek Jeter and his group for $1.1 billion. And then you have Derek, the optics on it. Just just forget about everything else. The optics. Then Derek Jeter, who grossly overpaid for the team, doesn't have enough money to buy the team, and is paying himself $5 million a year. His first major move is by trading the reigning NL MVP at the age of 27 to the team and the market that he had a Hall of Fame career with. A team and a market that he will always love more than the team in the market that he presides in right now. He will never love the Marlins the way he loves the Yankees, and he trades Stanton. His first order of business is to trade the reigning NL MVP to his old buddy Brian Cashman and his old team, the Yankees. It is such a bad look on so many levels for Major League Baseball and for Derek Jeter. I'd like to get into some more of this in the next segment. Um, because I know what the reaction is nationally to uh, a bunch of guys from Miami complaining uh, about what's going on with the Marlins. You didn't care about the team. You didn't go to the games. We see what that looks like on television. You need to understand the history of what's happened in this, uh, to this market when it comes to baseball. We don't go to the games because we've been betrayed by Major League Baseball. Every time you've gotten to know a player, every time you have a genera- uh, generational player like Miguel Cabrera or Giancarlo Santon, they're gone. 
And it's a vicious cycle where the owners do this to the market, but then they say they hold up the attendance because of their actions. They get to say no one came to the game, so that's why we had to do this. Right. But no one's coming to the game because of your action. And a quick history lesson for people who don't know. Wayne Huizenga was the original owner of the Marlins. They won the World Series in 1997. He spent a lot of money to win that World Series. The next year, he broke the team up. He eventually sold that team to Jeffrey Laurie and David Sampson. They came in. They operated. They lucked themselves into a World Series in 2003. Then they started to trade pieces of that team away. And now the team was just sold to Derek Jeter's group. And the first order of business for Derek Jeter is to take this team and start picking it apart. And you're going to be left with a minor league team. That's it. You're going to be left with a minor league team. And so you want to, you know, say the fans are bad down here. That's fine. Maybe they're not the best fans of the world. But any fan base, I don't care who it is, deserves better than what the Marlins fan base has gotten from Rob Manford in Major League Baseball. Any fan base, the worst fan base possible, deserves better treatment than what Marlin fans are getting down here. And to your point about fielding a minor league baseball team, now reports are circulating that Marcelo Zuna is on his way to St. Louis. Oh, boy. The Ryan Rosillo Show. Rosillo. The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. More independent agents sell Progressive Insurance than any other brand. Find that agent at Progressive.com. Now that's progressive. Todd McShay going to join us in about 11 minutes. His first mock draft is out. And we will discuss that and other things with uh, with Todd McShay. Mike, do you want to update the, uh, the polls real quick from our show? For those of you who don't know, uh, Rosillo is in a talent meeting. Uh, I am Stu Gatz. This is Mike Ryan. We're filling in for Rosillo today. We, uh, we host the, the Dan Levitard show, of course, along with Dan, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. And so the guys are in a meeting today, and they asked us to do two shows, and so we're we're gladly doing the two shows here. We're doing it with a <laughs> Glad, smile. Gladly, yeah, we're doing it happily. We're doing it with a smile on our face. At least, uh, at least Mike is. Yeah, you're dragging. I am. I'm tired. So anyway, at Levitard Show on Twitter, we update the polls at the end of every show, and we didn't have time today because we were talking about Giancarlo Stanton. Well, because Dan was yelling yeah. at Major League Baseball again. Dan's fired up. So uh, I would like Mike to update the polls right now. Again, it's at Levitard Show on Twitter. Uh, this one dates back to the uh, local hour of our show. Was that good entertainment or was it uncomfortable? Do you remember what that's in regards to? Yeah, that was Dan calling the uh, the owner, the majority owner of the Marlins, and I can't remember his name. Bruce Sherman? Bruce Sherman, and he got his assistant on the phone, and I found it to be very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. It was, Dan was threatening, too, yes. saying, we're going to call you every day until I speak with him. What was her name? Chris. Right. Then I called Chris, and I butted her up for about 15 minutes, and uh, we're having dinner tonight. All right. Well, 52% said uncomfortable. Okay. So maybe Dan needs to work on his tone a little bit the next time we try that. <laughs> There's no maybe. There. And there is a post-it on this computer saying try it again tomorrow. So he's, he's dead set on this. Okay. Next poll. Do you believe Kendrick Lamar when he says he saw an alien when he was six years old? I do. That comes from a Howard Stern interview Kendrick Lamar uh, recently did. Kendrick Lamar doesn't do many interviews, and I guess because uh, he'll just readily admit that he's been abducted by uh, by aliens. 57% of the audience said no, they do not believe Kendrick Lamar was abducted by aliens or saw an alien. All right. <laughs> this one's one of yours right here. Okay. Has Billy Donovan underachieved? I think Billy Donovan's done a fine job as the coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder, so no would be my... Well, 69% of the audience say he has underachieved. How has he underachieved? Someone explain that to me. Billy Donovan came in. It was a perfect job, but he came in. It was Kevin Durant, uh, Russell Westbrook. He got him to the Western Conference Finals. They were up 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals. They ended up losing. Yeah, it had well, nothing to do with Billy Donovan. I think, I think it's that part where they ended up losing. Well, okay, they lost to you know a team that many people call the greatest team they've seen in the history of the NBA. And they were up 3-1 on that team, and Billy Donovan did not squander that lead. Kevin Durant did. And then once Kevin Durant couldn't beat that team, he decided to join that team. And then the next season, without Kevin Durant and just Russell Westbrook, Donovan got him back to the playoffs. So they're struggling 26 games in this year, but I'm going to give them some more time. Because that Oklahoma City team, it's funny, Mike, when you see them play, there are there have been a handful of games where everything's clicking. That game against Golden State, where they blew them out and Golden State was healthy, where you watch that team, and that team looks really, really good. They're also nice where they look really, really bad. But it's 26 games in, and I'll give them 50 games or so to figure it out before I start crushing Billy Donovan. Yeah, but what you just described is a 500 basketball team. There are good moments and bad moments, and that's what the Oklahoma City Thunder are right now. All right. Should Mike McCarthy have negative three rings? Yes. The audience agrees. 63% say yes. Right. So we take the one that he has away, and we give him negative three. So we're subtracting four. Yeah. Because he should win more rings with Aaron Rodgers. The most egregious was uh, blowing that game against Seattle. 
Right. Everyone wants a point to the onside kick. Shouldn't have gotten that to that point. Right. Um, is Adam Vinatieri going to still be kicking field goals as a mummy in his 90s? Uh, I would say yes to that. So does 87% of the audience. All right. Are you a self-serious gas bag if you refer to the NFL as a National Football League? I would say no. 81% say yes. Okay. You agree with only 19% of the audience. Okay. Did you know that every time John Travolta goes to the bathroom in Pulp Fiction, something bad happens? I did not know that till today, but now that I think about it, yes, every time he does, something bad happens. 60% of the audience just learned that for the first time, too. All right. Do you feel shame when you land in the minority of one of our polls? <laughs> um, I never have, but I'm certain people do, yes. Well, 47% are feeling uh, shame right now because yes is in the minority of the poll. <laughs> oh, this is a big one. I have to open up a new window for this. This is uh, one of the more hotly contested uh, polls that we have, and it's one of the most important. All right, hurry because up because you got about 20 seconds here. Who is your favorite friend of the show? Let me vote for who I think. And the winner is, wow, this is astounding, Jason Leisure with 54% of the get, vote. Get out of here. He's a Dolphins beat reporter for the... Palm Beach Post. <laughs> the Palm Beach. Cody didn't win that thing? Leisure. I thought for sure uh, Cody would win that thing. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Rossillo. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There. Who texted you and um, what well, was the text about? When I was updating the polls, who's yeah. the greatest friend of the show, and Jason Leisure from the Palm Beach Post, who only joins us, by the way, on the local hour, right. he won the poll overwhelmingly. Yes. But Adnan Verk texted me, right. I'm a top five friend of the show according to that poll. To which we looked at each other and said, isn't he supposed to be in a meeting right now? Right. And I asked him, are you texting us from the meeting? And he just responds with one word, busted. <laughs> the talent meeting that's going on in Bristol right now. Now, I did learn from Saruti that he is sitting right next to Ben Lyons. Yeah. That which, of sense. course, he is. Yeah. I mean, Adnan is always sitting next to Ben Lyons. I imagine that Todd McShay is in studio right now. So I imagine that's that's... That pairing makes sense. Like, if you're going to a group meeting at ESPN, it would make sense that that Adnan be sitting next to Lions. But I am guessing right now, now, I don't know how McShay got out of this meeting, but I'm guessing if he went to the meeting and Kuiper was there, I think most people would think, hey, it makes sense if McShay was sitting next to Kuiper. But I'm guessing McShay would sit as far away from Kuiper as possible. Todd, is that fair? I'd probably wind up sitting next to him. Only because he, Mel can't get from the bathroom to a studio. And so right. I'd wind up having to, to direct him there. I don't even know how he got there with, without me getting him on the bus. Well, how'd you not get there? Yeah, see, it's I don't know, it? man. I, I, I guess the mock draft, I've been on every show today starting at 9 a.m. I've got college football live, NFL live, got to tape a bunch of hits after. I think, it's, I think they're just trying to get the most out of, out of me today. I got a couple of things to say to you guys, first of all. Okay. One is, yeah, well, he probably has beef with us. Oh, no, 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 I have no beef. Okay. Well, because no, no. you know what you know what I'm going to say. It's kind of weird. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. It's kind of weird that we're talking to you because you know how much Dan hates the draft. Oh, and anytime I, I say Todd, I want Todd on the show. He yells at me. He throws a phone book at me. Right. Actually, yeah, I'm sure. I, you know what? I still love your show, even though I know he hates me. That's fine. Thank that's, you. That's good. Uh, one, you guys are animals. Okay. I, I've got a long work day, but seven hours of radios, no joke. Congratulations. Two, Thank you. Uh, Mike Ryan. When are you getting yeah. your own show? Three. When am I getting my own show? Yeah. Stew on that for a second. Three, okay, I'm a stew. Mm-hmm. Last time I came on with you guys, you you said that I I seemed a little angry, and and then you sent me off with the Musburger second down and nine, which mm, right. is a clear indicator that I I was angry. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was, so I went back and I, I checked the tape. I was really angry. You were. I yeah, think a yeah. month of just sitting in a dark room and then watching tape and then going outside and being freezing cold. I think it got to me, and I didn't even know it. So thanks for pointing it out, guys. It's soul-crushing, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. Soul well, we sort of wanted to ask you about what else do you do with your time, because I can't really imagine you just binge-watching something on Netflix or going to a movie. I just always imagine you breaking down a temple guard. <laughs> I, I, I break down some some Netflix, too. Like, I've, like, I've, watched, like, I've watched like Ozarks and some different... Uh, yeah. What's Todd McShay's favorite movie? 
Ooh, favorite of all time? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen one? Yeah, I've seen a few movies. I haven't been to a movie theater in years, though. That sounds surprising. Of course you haven't. Like 10 years, probably. Well, you're, you're clearly you know the last always- the movie up- I saw? What was the one? Um, oh, jeez. Batman Return. No, it wasn't Batman. Yeah, Dark maybe, Knight? What's that? The Dark Knight? Yes. What, what year was that? Well, Heath Ledger was just a lot. dead. Yeah. So, um, like 10, 12 years ago, maybe? Yeah, what was that? Yeah, 2011? It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty yeah. pathetic. Yeah, well, judging by your tan, you're never in a, in a movie theater. This tan is perfect, and I was talking during the break <laughs> with Stu Gatz. That, we'll get to your uh, mock draft here. Yeah, minute, yeah. Though. Actually, maybe we won't. Yeah, yeah, not as important as uh, what I like to call the tan to teeth ratio. Oh, nice. Um, I got you number one on, on my big board. The tan and how rich that is. You guys have really been to, breaking me down today. Yeah, I compared heard, to the, yes. some hair, too. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get, yeah. To, we'll get well, to the we'll hair. We'll get to the hair, yeah. too, because okay. your hair, not unlike the leaves of a tree, changes with the season. Well, I have the worst tan possible right now. My, my hands and my face are tan. The rest of my body is very pale, and it's because I'm outside for 16 straight weeks of games. Like the last game I did was Orlando, three and a half hours just baking in the sun. Texas, right. Oklahoma. Hmm. So yeah. this is all. So you're alleging this is a natural tan. Oh, this is a natural tan. Plus, I've had like five different updates on makeup today. So okay, yeah. when they put that you, spray you, stuff on you, you appear sun kissed. No, I, I the makeup ladies did a good job then. Yeah, yeah. Will Kane does too. Now speaking of Will Kane, yep. Okay, here's what we need you to do. Okay, because we have a medal stand of people who have the best hair at ESPN, and my bronze medalist is Saruti. Okay. Great hair. Yeah. Better hair not- before, but great. He's doing the, the exec thing. He's got to please the suits. Right. Now, last time I saw Saruti, he had the hair. He had it grown out long. He had a bun. And so just the fact that I know he can grow that out and looks good with a bun, for me, that solidifies him on the as the bronze medalist at ESPN. Completely yeah. legit. Okay. We have you as the silver medalist. And we're sorry if you're insulted by that. No, I'm actually not. I'm, I'm shocked to be on the list. Okay. Now, Mike and I thought that, because you have great hair. Thanks. Mike and I thought it's that, beautiful. Yeah, we thought that we had <laughs> we thought we were on the same page with the gold medalist and and clearly we're not. And we're so not. what I'd like you to do is in your best kind of, you know, draft presentation is kind of break down these two gentlemen's hair, okay? Yep. The first one, don't do it yet. I'm just going to tell you who the two guys are. Okay. We are split here. I went with Reese Davis. Mike Ryan went with Will Kane, which I was. Well, Will has nice hair, but I was shocked that he went with Will. Kane. Will has the hair of a Disney prince. Okay, so re, uh, so yep. it, Todd McShay, if you could draft expert, you have sat, you have watched the film on both these guys' hair. Um, can you break down first the hair of Reese Davis? Reese Davis is a, a classic talent. I mean, he's he's a guy that you look at and you feel like he just rolls out of bed, and his hair is exactly how it was. Before he went to bed, the perfect part, it just it never moves. He's got the nice dark fl- flow to it, and and really consistently shows up day in and day out with the same hair, the same color, the same part, the same look. This guy is the model of consistency. All right, now Jeez. so you you may have swayed Mike Whoa. here, but now you're gonna have a chance to sway me because now I need your analysis on the head of hair uh, that Will Kane possesses. Will Kane is much improved. If you go back and check his tape, a.k.a. his media zone picture, if you just Google Will Kane yeah. and study that tape, you're yeah. going to see a, a guy who, who wouldn't even have been in the conversation. So what he's done is he's gone to work every day. He knew what he had to do. He's really He, he just understands the game, and he understands that, hey, if I'm going to be a TV star, if I'm going to be on TV every day, if I'm going to be on with Stephen A. Smith – with my takes, I've got to have the right hair, and I've got to make it look good. And I'm going to also bring the beard with it. I think that's yeah. a big part. Don't yeah. overlook the beard. It kind of all flows together. Will Kane, to me, is maximizing his skill set right now. You are good. I mean, Levitard has no idea what he's missing out on. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, it was fantastic. You are. Oh, we I mean, love well, you, McShay. The, the one time I was on with you guys, I had, I had a, a tone violation. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. So uh, I, but I you. It. So far uh, today, fantastic, and so much so. We're going to bring uh, bring you back for a second segment, and because you were so good, we'll actually discuss your draft. <laughs> Maybe. Your, yes, yes. Maybe. Possibly. Okay. Big Shea uh, released 1.0, the first mock draft. It was like Christmas morning for me when I saw it. It's fantastic. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Rossillo. All right, we continue on with Todd McShay. We'll get to his mock draft here in just a second. There's a big talent meeting going on up in Bristol right now. Is this Goo Goo Dolls? I have no idea. Nailed it. 
It is Goo Goo Dolls? I think so. Were, really? we, pl- were we playing yeah. that yeah, ironically? thumbs up from the crew here. All right. Uh, so there's a big talent meeting. Mike, um, Mike you, uh, that's not your, you're not rolling that out, are you? I, I do. I do so ironically. Oh, you do? Right. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. you're better than that. I've actually been to a Goo Goo Dolls concert. Have you really? Ironically. Wow. Really? Yes. Yes. In fact, I have post-its. This is actually a weird revelation. I have post-its uh, hanging on my fridge, and it's Goo Goo Doll. It's a Goo Goo Doll notepad that I <laughs> just have in my kitchen. That's funny. I'll oh send you a picture. God, yeah, no, I swear. I wouldn't I swear. be bragging about that, but that's cool. No, I, but I do so ironically. Yeah, I get it. Um, what's the cheesiest concert you've ever been to, McShay? Cheesiest? Like the one that you're most ashamed to admit that you went to it. Oh. Man, I went, uh, Dave Matthews I went to a Ooh. handful of times. I kind of oh. like Dave, though. Oh, you, you would. I mean, I kind of like Dave, right. Well, how old are you, Mike? I'm 32. 32. Yeah, that eight years is a big difference, I feel like. Right. He's but, a hipster, No, I'm, I'm not defending it. It is what right. it is. All right. How about you? Stugatz. Oh, I've been to, uh, God, I've seen Barry Manilow. Stop it. I'm jealous, actually. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I, 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 would, I would totally go to Manilow. <laughs> I've seen Manilow, uh, McShay, and I've also seen Neil Diamond. Oh, I, uh, I saw I Neil go to Diamond. Neil Diamond. <laughs> uh, dude, oh, McShay, it's yeah. such a great show. I had <laughs> I could front row for Neil Diamond last year. It was amazing. <laughs> there was a lot of Neil Diamond going on in my house growing up. <laughs> was there really? Yeah. My dad what? was a big up on the record player. Really? Yeah. I, I uh, Most people my age got into Neil because of Saving Silverman, which is one of those good, bad movies. Yep. Right. Um, and he's become a sort of icon. I got so into his music, and they're catchy as hell. He actually has so many great songs that he doesn't even perform that's been redone. You know that great song, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Too, from Pulp Fiction? Yes. Neil Diamond. Red, Red Wine, Neil Diamond. Oh, was it God. really? Yeah, man. Oh. Why'd you get him started? And the Jeff? cool thing is they're all all Neil doesn't Diamond versions of these doesn't songs. Doesn't he have to pay a fine for this? Oh, I got to talk like Mel Kuyper. Yeah, yeah but it's a new show. Yeah, you have to talk. You have to break Todd, down. Todd, 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 yes. Todd, Red Red Wine by UB40. It's actually a, a Neil Diamond song, and you could actually check it out. It's a, definitely a Neil Diamond song. You could pot it up on your Apple Music or Spotify. Red Red Wine by Neil Diamond. Absolute classic, Todd. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right, I, I just want to ask you a quick question because this talent meeting's going on, and the three of us were not invited because we don't have any talent and. It's all, but Mike and I were laughing during the break. Uh, McShay, how do you imagine this goes down? So, Greeny's in the talent meeting. Yep. And Wingo is in the talent meeting. Yep. And Golick walks into the talent meeting last because he's always late. We imagine Golick to be last in the talent meeting. I'm going to ask Mike first and then Todd. How do you imagine? So, Golick walks in. Greeny has taken his seat. Wingo has taken his seat. They're on opposite sides of the uh, of the room there. Does Golick sit closer to Greeny, or does he sit closer to Trey Wingo? Hmm. I think he sits closer to Wingo, but I like to picture it differently. I have uh, Golick and Wingo already at the meeting. Golick is sitting next to Wingo, but he has an empty seat next to him, and he's reserved it for his good friend, who is now fashionably late because he's big time and he moved to New York, and he has an open seat next to him, and in comes Mike Greenberg. And they lock eyes for a little bit. And Greeny then turns away and sits next to Jalen Rose and Michelle Beal. <laughs> I like it. I, now, I'm going to play your game, even yes, though I I'm looking it. at Trey Wingo right now as he's hosting NFL Live. But I'm going to play your game. Oh, he is. So he's not in the meeting. Okay, okay right. but hypothetically. Okay. Theater of the mind. Okay. I, I just feel like it's, it's like that awkward vibe when you're in the restaurant with a, your new girl and then your old girl comes in. <laughs> you know where you start getting like you try you play it off cool you're not gonna let anyone see that you're nervous but your heart's pounding you're sweating a little bit right uh, this right. lady killer has been in that situation a you lot apparently seem, you seem experienced picture. <laughs> yeah. no 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 all right let's get to uh so so your mock came out here uh your first mock of the year and i guess nothing's really changed from the standpoint of you guys all said before the college football season that if all these guys came out there's gonna be five or six quarterbacks taken uh, in the first round. What's interesting is I was not – now, this is just me, and maybe you're seeing things that I'm not seeing. The two guys you have at the top, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, Um, man, Todd, I'll just say it. I wasn't terribly impressed with either of those guys this season. This is, a, this is a really hard class right now because I know the talent is there with the top three, Rosen, Darnold, and Allen. Allen, pro- Allen played the worst of all of them at a lower-level school in Wyoming. Two, three losses when he was healthy were against Iowa, Oregon, and at Boise State. Six and one in, uh, in, in play against non-Power 5 teams. 
But he just he didn't he didn't improve this year. And I listen, he lost four guys to the NFL on offense from a year ago and and though you just don't reload at Wyoming. He has the arm, the mobility, he has the competitiveness, he has he can do a lot of things that very few people even in the NFL can do at the quarterback position. But the two areas that are most important important are in terms of success in the NFL or accuracy and decision making and that's where he has been very inconsistent. Darnold and Rosen, I mean Listen, I, I feel like I've been a defense lawyer all fall long, and I can't excuse some of the things. I think Rosen is more polished and ready to play in the NFL today. I think Darnold has the intangible qualities and the ability to extend plays, and I think would, when, when given the supporting cast that's solid, I think that Darnold is going to wind up being the, the best of the group. But right now, I, I also think he'd, he'd be wise to go back to school and gain some more experience. So it's a tough call he's got to make. Go back to school and be better set for maybe the long term of his career, or do I take the $20, 25000000 million in guaranteed money? Well, Todd, I'm actually, um, I'm actually a Browns fan, and the Browns are going to be picking number one overall. So this yep. is obviously a, a hugely important decision for them. It just seems to me, in watching Sam play and, watching, and hearing you uh, break him down, it seems to me there's more bust potential with Sam Darnold, just in sort of the reckless way that he plays. And the Browns have to get this one right. Do they have the luxury of being patient and waiting for this guy to, to not be a bust? Why not go with more of a sure thing and rose him? There's no such thing as a sure thing when taking quarterbacks. That really isn't. And so much of it, unfortunately. Look at Jerry Goff, man. After one year, we were ready to write him off. Then he gets a little bit of better supporting cast and, much more importantly, a coaching staff that knows how to coach the position and is going to work to maximize his strengths and what he does best. And all of a sudden, you know, he's playing like he is this year. So it, so much of it is where you wind up. I mean, some of the guys that the Browns drafted may have been good other places. But, but you know, I, just, I worry about anyone that winds up going there, although I do think that they can coach the position there. Now you have to have a general manager that's going to get some consistency in terms of the organization. I would bet on Darnold. Rosen is more polished and is a better quarterback, but there are concerns in terms of loving the game, needing the game, coachability, et cetera, that scare me more than some of the things we saw on the field from Darnold this year. All right, Todd, we've got about 30 seconds left here. Who's the best player? Is it a quarterback or is it someone else? Who is the best player in this year's draft? I think Saquon Bar- Barkley, the Penn State running back. I, 235 pounds to move the way he does. He can catch the ball. He can block. I think he's going to be another one. We've seen Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, and uh, Fournette in the last few years. I think he's another one in, in what's becoming a pretty good line of running backs. All right, Todd, we appreciate it. This was fun, man. This we was appreciate fun. it. We'll have to yep. do it again. We'll tell Dan we like you, and we don't care what he thinks. <laughs> the Ryan Rossillo Show. All right, it is your life and our advice. Mike, you excited for this? I'm so excited. Still unclear on the rules. <laughs> when you, you want Saruti to go over them with you again? One, just one quick time. All go right. ahead, Saruti, Baba, someone. Tell Mike the rules here. I mean, there's no real rule. I mean, it's basically just like do whatever you would do in this guy's scenario. So these guys ah. are going to call in and tell you what their situation is, and you tell them what you would do or what you think they should do. Okay. All right, got it. Crystal clear now. You got it? Yeah. I'm good on the rules. A little confused. We'll bring you back to explain overrated, underrated, properly rated. Later. All right, George, you ready? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, let's, let's go. do it. Life advice. Is Gus calling in? No, Gu- we should have <laughs> Gus calling. He doesn't need life advice. He should be giving <laughs> life advice. He's at exactly. 11 right now. Let's go to uh, Brad. Brad's in Pittsburgh. Brad, go ahead. You're on ESPN Radio. Hey, guys. Big fan. Hey. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Uh, wanted to ask about Bitcoin. I invested all of my family's savings into Bitcoin. Um, First, when do I pull it out? And then uh, also, do I tell them? And if so, when? Uh, did you make a? Have you made a lot of money on it yet? Yeah, like if man, you sold if you, money over here. If you sold it today, would you have made yourself a good deal of money? Yeah, some money. But should I uh, tell them? Um, no. Yeah, don't, definitely don't. Tell yeah, them. definitely don't tell do them. Not but tell but them. I would yeah. tell them today. Like Jose Canseco had a series of tweets yesterday, which got him fired because he doesn't care. But the one thing he was right about... Where was Jose Canseco working? He was not brought back. Oh. And he was a part of the uh, the post-game and pre-game for the uh, A's. Oakland oh, A's coverage. the Oakland A's. And now he's got a new show out in Caesars Palace. Called Renegades. The, called the Renegades. With, uh, who of was course. it with? Jim McMahon and T.O. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd go see it's that. It's at Caesars. Yes. I'm in. It's I'm at in Caesars. Right. I would have thought it would be at Harrah's or something. <laughs> yeah. it's at but it's at Caesars. It's that means they're actually getting paid. Right. Yes. Which, is, which explains why Canseco went on that rant, because he didn't yeah. care if the A's brought him back, because right. he's got bigger projects. Right. All right. 
But he did make some comments about Bitcoin. Yeah. And now there are going to be very few people who make millions upon millions of dollars on this, and everyone else is going to going to end up losing money because yes. they're going to sell at the right time. Right. So what I'm telling uh, this guy in Pittsburgh to do, I forget his name. Brad, I think. Yeah, sell it now and don't ever tell your family. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Right. We often have conversations during the breaks because we see the price of Bitcoin skyrocketing. And it's all this internet money. It's not tangible. Yeah. We don't even understand it or how it's a thing. Yeah. Bottom's going to fall out on this thing. It is. I have a buddy who got in on the bottom floor of Bitcoin and has is one of those guys that's made a lot of money. Right. So when he sells it, George, there are a handful of guys like your buddy. Okay. Yeah. When he sells it, price is going to drop. Mm-hmm. All the people who have who don't have the money that he has. Yeah, they're going to lose it. They're going to get crushed. Yeah. I would advise everyone to get out now. Everyone. <laughs> also. Seriously. Crash the market. Uh, yes. The government. Crash the whole market. <laughs> so the top guys. Well, that, now um, yeah, that's not fair what I just did to your buddy because yeah, if everyone yeah. sells, then he oh, loses his yeah. value. I feel like the government's trying to figure out what this is, and yeah. when they do, run. We're, we're all done. <laughs> right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Cody in Alabama. Cody, go ahead. Hey, guys. I love the show. I get the show. I've won T-shirts from the show, but I'm the one who sent the text in about feeling shame when I land in the minority of the polls. Uh, I guess this is for you two guys. How do you deal with shame other than just not having any? I don't experience shame. That's how I deal with it. Yeah. It's very simple. If you've never felt the feeling of shame, then there's no way to really deal with you it. You have an immunity to it. I don't yeah. know what it feels yeah. like. Yes. A lot of people look at Sugats as one of the missing links. He's actually the next step of human evolution. He doesn't have to deal with shame. Uh, you should sell that of as, a, as a vaccine, the, uh, the shameless vaccine. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> spray this a couple times. It's like deer antler spray. <laughs> I don't feel shame, man. Uh, remember when shame. that was the biggest problem in sports? <laughs> yes, deer <laughs> antler spray. Good time. <laughs> Roger <laughs> Goodell would kill to have those problems. Wait back. a second. Did we have the deer antler guy on? No, but the, that guy. You the, didn't? That's no. so you guys. No, yeah. well, he uh, was, remember he was parading around right. Radio Row in a tank top. Oh, yeah. yeah. And deer antler spray. Yeah. I miss that. So shame is easy to avoid just to put a bow on this. Just yeah. don't, don't experience shame. Yeah. Don't feel it. Just, right. Numb to it. Let's go to James in Virginia. James, go ahead. Hey, guys, I need your help. Now, here's the situation. I met, I met this girl, okay, and I've been with her for maybe a few months, and uh, I found out that she got bad breath. I mean, just terrible breath. Mm-hmm. But then after, you know, doing my investigation, you know, and, and, and confronting her, I found out that she had bad teeth. And it's causing the bad breath. So now it's going to take maybe thousands of dollars to get her mouth sick. And I, I don't even say that. Like, our conversation is over the shoulder. You know, so what What should I do? Should I just leave her or should I just stick with her and try to get this thousand dollar thing? Because she, she had a medical plan, but a dental plan is just, just terrible. All right, you so, got to look at it like a GM, okay? Every GM needs to find a diamond in the rough. Do you believe she's a diamond in the rough type, barring the teeth and the breath? I don't know because I haven't kissed her yet. No, no, but I'm saying like just the just the looks, buddy. Just you know, like or or you know, the package, what she does for a living, all that, like all the stuff that goes into wanting to be in a relationship. Her personality. Whether, whether you would get be along nice to with right you, now. Whether you get her no, personality. No. Yeah, would, yeah. Yeah. Would you, but would you be willing to bypass some of the warts because there is a diamond in the rough? Is what George is trying to say. Breath, man. But anyway. I mean, listen, ba- bad I'm breath is a deal breaker for me. I'd end it right there. Yeah, yeah me well, too. It yeah. doesn't sound like you're in too deep considering you haven't kissed her just yet. I know that's on account of the teeth. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, perhaps uh, if it's four months and you still don't know where you stand, maybe, I don't want to do this, but maybe get out. Yeah, time to go. Yeah, James, get the hell out. Yeah, get out. And wherever you go, find the new phone. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Mike in Florida. Mike, go ahead. You're on ESPN Radio. Hey, guys. Love the show. Uh, hey, I'm directing this at Stu, but I don't know the, about the other guy's uh, marriage situation. So, Stu, yeah. got a wedding. Uh, my daughter's getting married in a month. Mm-hmm. I'm remodeling my house currently. Oof. My wife and I are having this conversation. Uh, and she says, uh, hey, let's not get each other a Christmas present. I'm thinking, oh, right, I'm going to save some money on that at least. And then I go, oh, you know, that might be a trap. It's a trap. So, Stu, is it a yeah, trap? Run. Well, hold on. It's so funny because last night was the first night of Hanukkah. And by the way, Tariq Cohen and your family, happy Hanukkah to you. Yeah. Uh, same with you, JoJo Smith-Schuster. The Schusters, of course. Or Juju. Juju Smith. I yeah, call them yeah. JoJo Smith. This just happened to me last night. Whenever your wife tells you not to do something, do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay? She said the same thing. Honey, married 15 years. I love you. You love me. No need to exchange Hanukkah gifts. So I didn't get her a Hanukkah gift. And? We get home last night, first night of Hanukkah. I was talking to Mike Ryan right afterwards. She pulls out the gift. I didn't have a gift. 
A gift that you paid for? A gift that she bought me with my credit card. Right. Yes. With your Amazon account. Yes. Yes. Yep. I'd have a gift. Whatever your wife says, do the opposite. The Ryan Rossillo Show. I am on my seventh hour of hosting radio shows. Seven consecutive hours. Whew. I am slurring. I feel drunk right now. Hammered. What did I just say during the break, Mike? What's the game that's coming up at uh, two, uh, 315? So, Rudy, what's the name of this game? Well, it's called Over, Under, or Properly Rated. Okay, how did I pronounce it during the uh, commercial break, Mike? <laughs> Here is live footage of what I sound like during the commercial break. <laughs> yeah, you're going a little kooky. Whew. So, Rudy, have you guys noticed it back there? I am losing my mind. I think in the, in the breaks we're all good. The conversation's great, and then once the on air product goes, you kind of lose it a little bit. Yeah, well, we'll uh, we'll get to the sound of uh, Charles Barkley in a second. Speaking of the breaks, what were you guys talking about, Sarudi, during the break? What was going on there? All right, so basically, Rick DiPietro used to play uh, goalie for the Islanders, I believe. He walked by us and had a very heavy scent of cologne. Oh yeah, he would. He looks yeah, uh, he's like back hair, full man. suit. Yeah. It's yeah. He's the whole package. He yeah. kind of looks like a taller Sarudi, right? Right. Not surprising. Uh, that, not surprising. That's that a great DPH compliment. Right. So thank you, Mike. Yeah, DPH is a good looking guy. So really good looking. So, so Rudy, do you know how good looking you are, man? I guess not, apparently. I guess right. not. But thank okay. you, guys. It's a lot of dudes telling me that. So I guess you should be pumped. Right. You should, but well, you should. Um, so anyway, so we're basically asked the question, hey, how many times do you wear cologne a year? And the over under was five. And I was the only one that had the over on that. Well, I'm not shocked that you. That you would go over on that. Uh, so Bubba's back there. Uh, Bubba, yeah, you could set the over under at three, and Bubba would go under. That's true. You said at one, and Bubba would go under. Ah, uh, right. that'd be a push. Okay, I'm way over that. Occasional bar mitzvah, a wedding, or something. Exactly. Gotcha. I'm way over that. Oh, really? Oh, right, hold on. Yes, we're gonna do a live yes. look in uh, from the talent meeting with Ryan Rosillo on the Rosillo show in a second. But Mike is Mike is one of the best smelling men I have. Uh, people. Period. That I've ever encountered. You put something on every day, don't you? Not every day, but about five days a week. Right. And I always have an emergency stash in the car. Do you really? Yeah, you never know when you go to the gym or you play a pickup basketball game or a day like today where you're on the air for seven hours. Right. You know, a little bit of a, a freshen up. Mikey A was under five. Is that what you're telling me, Saruti? Far under. And Mikey C is still there because he's under zero. Like, well, Mikey C really should be walking around with a bottle of cologne because all he does is, like, he smokes a cigarette, spray cologne, cigarette, cologne, cigarette, yeah. cologne. Anyway, subscribe right now to the 30 for 30 podcast and the listen tab of the ESPN app or Apple podcast brought to you by Delta, making your travel experience informed, connected, and seamless. Keep climbing. Ryan Rosillo was joining us live from the talent meeting on the Bristol campus to give us a live look in. Rosillo joins us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Good afternoon, Ryan. Hey, Stu. How are you? I'm doing well. Mike Ryan's here with me as well. Hey, Ryan. Hey, guys. Great job out of you. Six hours in, one more hour to go. I really appreciate it. How did you get out of this? Is that just part of the Levitar La Familia? Well, filling in for you. Oh, all right. Yeah, Yeah, I guess that's not as cool. But, no, cause, um, no, 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 because part of the meeting fell during the taping of Highly Questionable and our radio show, and so we, you know, that's why. That's how. Okay. All right. Well, it was pretty cool. A lot of famous dudes. I just saw Scotty Pippen and Jalen Rose get into a car service. What? So then there's kind of like car service guys, and then there are shuttle guys. Right. And Scotty Pippen wasn't a shuttle guy. But <laughs> I get that. Like, you know what I mean? Whenever you're walking around the workplace and you yes. go, welcome, yes. that guy gets to do this, this guy gets to do this. I think we'd all like to be a little bit more self-aware. But when I saw Scotty Pippen get into a car service, I wasn't like, I'm not going to go meet with Skipper now about why he's getting a car. <laughs> right. Who was holding court today? Because uh, early reports say Joe Tess was. Yeah, Tess started it off, and he, he does this thing where he had like a real hard rock phase. And he got up and he said, for my dollar, Judas Priest brings it more regularly hard than most 80s Brit bands. Wow. And also, that's a good Joe Tess he does. Let me tell you about Dwayne Allman's eating habits. And then he just goes. Um, then there was another thing wow. where I think this is probably why Stu wasn't there, was that Skipper launched this hole for 2018 because mobile is king. 
this new thing that was called Stu's Got Next. So remember when we had the Who's Next ESPN yeah. the magazine cover? Yeah. Like, we had this slideshow where Skipper was up there and he was just going, does it make sense to give Brady maybe two rings instead of five? And we played your clip from this morning, and then we just started running through it all. And then, you know, they got up there and they said, moving forward for the draft in 2018, we're getting rid of Mel, we're getting rid of McShay, and they just ran clips of him breaking down players, just through going, he can spin it to make all the throws. There's something you can't quantify about him. So half the meeting was about Stu, and that's probably why you weren't there, because it would have been uncomfortable. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, this is uh, this is delightful. Um, That's clearly the direction they're headed in, considering this is his seventh straight hour of radio. Yes, yes. And what do you think about that Brady take, by the way? Uh, it makes. I mean, Skipper was up there. He goes, look, you know, pick at the, <laughs> pick at the end zone. He goes, you know, really, Atlanta's defense is the ones that fell apart. So then you, you mix it in with a tuck rule. Like, Skipper's like, I got two, not five. <laughs> uh, any other highlight? Was there any tension in the room? Was there any touch? Because we were asking the question. Now, I know Greeny wasn't there, but we were wondering out loud on national radio that if Greeny were there and Wingo was there and they're on opposite sides of the room, would Golick walk in late? Because he always walks in late. Would Golick walk in and sit closer to Greeny or closer to Wingo? So that didn't happen no. because Greeny, yeah, Greeny didn't show up and Wingo was taping NFL Live. I'm wondering, and by the way, Scotty Pippen is on my television screen right now. So wherever that car was taking him, got him there quickly. Um, what I, yeah, what I'm wondering is, was there any tension in the room anywhere? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always a little tension because there's, I mean, it's just a lot of egos. But I think when when they ran the clip of, of some of the first take highlights, right. and then there was a Stephen A. take, and then there was a Kellerman take, and I was positioned near Will Kane, and <laughs> there was no Will Kane take. <laughs> right. And then he, he kind of sulked for a good six minutes. Like, I'm not quite sure he was paying attention to anything. <laughs> and then they went back to the take slideshow, and they got a Will Kane take in there, and it was like he was, it was like Wolverine coming back to life, like he was an adrenaline needle, and he, he just he started sitting straight up again, and he was like, "All right, I'm in. I'm, I'm I'm a player. I'm a player in this thing." So that was, had I not had the seat I had, I, I would have never been able to give you that kind of intel. But it was amazing. Right. That's probably the right approach because if they did a will take before a max take, then we have a whole different problem. <laughs> right. There you go, and that's yes. why that's why you're a producer because you get that stuff. Like a lot of people in the room, I'm not even sure they picked up on it. Right. But again, we're all sitting as close to Will. Was Adnan paying attention at all? Because he has texted us uh, nonstop uh, from the meeting. Pretty sure he Facetime me. Yeah, yeah. I never saw him in there until the very end, and we started talking about Steve McQueen's role in Papillon. Of course, so, right. uh, of course, of course. Yeah, right. I mean, he was he was saying hi. He looked a little disheveled, but kind of like pre disheveled. Right. And then, you know, I always like making mistakes. Sometimes, like you forget how much money Mark share has made. So he and I are just having small talk, and you know, I was like, "Oh man," he, he was like, "Yeah, I'm going down to the national title game," and I was like, "Oh, I'm talking about sideline pass and He's like, "Well, I'm bringing a bunch of friends." And then I was like, "Oh, no way!" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, he's got a sweep." And I'm going, oh my, and I'm, the first thing I almost did was like, well, did you get the suite through work? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> The way we would, yeah. Yeah, right, right. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. No, that's, 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 you, were like, you were like a basketball gay player for 10 years in baseball. Yeah. Oh, that guy made a half a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, you, you, he's right. a heck of a guy. Right. Oh, no, he's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. Oh, but this is a total name drop, but just like one night we were in this movie festival in Greenwich, Connecticut. Right. And it was at, like, a luxury car dealership with Ferraris and Lambos and stuff. And he goes, hey, Priscilla, let's go downstairs and look at a couple of these. I go, well, for what reason <laughs> would I look at any of them? I'm just going to feel worse. So, anyway, that, that wasn't that great of a story. I should have stopped it. No, no, it's actually pretty funny because it, you do. Like, you, you tend to forget. <laughs> when forget. You're, when you're up in Bristol, you tend to forget. You're talking to, to, to Mark Deshera and that he has signed $300 million worth of contracts. You forget it, you know? Yeah, like I co-hosted a show with Jamal Mashburn, and then I remember at one point, I was like, you know, do you miss the game at all? And he goes, well, I made like $70 million not playing in the last contract, <laughs> right. and I bought a bunch of car dealerships. So he's, made more, he's made yeah. more money in his post-playing career than he did while playing. He's a mogul. I think yeah. he has a bunch of Papa Johns. Yeah, yeah, like he's a real mogul. It's not just in his bio on Twitter. Right. <laughs> uh, Rosillo, this was this was delightful, man. Um just a tremendous live update from the ESPN uh, talent meetings. What's next here? Is there a gathering? Are you guys having some some drinks, dinner? What's going on next? 
Um, I actually I left. I went to go play basketball. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, uh, Scotty Pippen. I was like, man, I'm I'm off today, and I have about another three hour. I right, so right. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go play some pickup folks afternoon moves with Pippen and Jalen. Yes. Yeah, nice. right, I think, right. I think those right. guys, those guys did do a hey, yeah, because you know whenever they're like, oh, you play a little, yeah, we should get together and play. I'm like, I'm gonna go play right now, and they're like, we'll see you there. <laughs> and they never show up. All right, man. We'll uh, we'll uh, we'll listen to you tomorrow, man. Enjoy the uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon off here, okay? Hey, seriously, thank you guys very much uh, for for what you did today. That, that no, meant a lot. Really no, it's our pleasure, and thank you for uh, for trusting us to do it. <laughs> Although, and when you hit, when you see the feedback, I'm not certain you'll be thanking us. Okay? <laughs> No, no. I mean, you know, like I said, with, with you, I can never prove what's going to happen with everybody. Like, I actually think more people probably like you that like my show. You know, I, I don't think that there's that big of a... I don't, I don't think there'll be all sorts of people going like, oh, this is the worst. Why is Stu here? Um, so, you know, uh, whatever. I'm not, I'm not remotely worried about it. And this got way too serious. And you're the future of the company if you look at all the stuff we did. Yes, Stu sir. got next. Yep, I like that. I mean, that's, right. you know, the S in ESPN stands for Stu. All right, thank you, Priscilla. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to the Ryan Rossillo Show podcast. You can check out the show live weekdays at 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and on ESPN News. The Ryan Rossillo Show podcast.